storyline yeah. where he is gay in it. I can't even remember. I mean, honestly, I played it in PS3. Like, Frank's not out. in it. It's just you go to one of the levels, you go into Bill's town, you avoid all his traps. He saves you. He's a miserable old cunt, mm. and you find out about Frank through a letter that he's left for for Bill, but you're not sure if Bill's ever read it or not. But he basically states that he, he left him. He just walked out on him. They were a gay couple. But he, he left him because he hated him because he's just an asshole. He's like, I've always hated you, you fucking asshole. And he doesn't die of cancer and Bill doesn't die. That's what happens in the show, apparently. Okay. Get some rest. Um, and Wait. they changed it in the show. The letter that Joel ends up reading is a letter from Bill as, he's, as he dies. Saying, cause I, think, I, I think he didn't want to live without Frank. It was one of them sort of stories. Frank dies of cancer and he didn't want to live without him. In the apocalypse, you, so... Give him that. You, have you, you didn't watch the show yet? You know, able to get a source to watch it. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, oh, when it's all out, I'm gonna stream. get now TV for one month and then watch it all at once. I would get a shady stream, mate. Right? So I'd be doing getting a stream it. You may be able to get a now TV trial. I'm not sure. You can in seven days, but yeah, I just wanted to make if it's all out at the same time, I can watch yeah. it all at the same time. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wanting, but I've, I've watched the little trailers and stuff because I just sort of want to see the up next parts. And they've made. Uh, do you remember Henry and Sam, the two black kid and his brother? Honestly, I really can't imagine. Like, they've like made the, they've made the little kid years. deaf, mm. which is a complete change from the game. But I think it adds. Um, it looks like it adds something to it because obviously he can't hear what's going on around him, and his brother's just that bit more protective over him. He's always had to be protective over him, even before the apocalypse. And well, I suppose he wouldn't have been born in the apocalypse, would he? Actually, before the apocalypse, because he's a kid. Then was it yeah, ten years ago? Was... Over that, more than that. Well, it's set in twenty twenty three, but it's. Um... I mean, the game. Like, when did it come yeah, out? The first yeah. one. Is that like twenty thirteen. Yeah. Ten, ten years this this June. That's when I played it. Like. Fucking class, I and mean, they just the audience are just devastated that they've seen the death of certain people. And I'm like, wait till they fucking see the series two. Mm. You know what? You know, do you know the, the core? I'm not going to spoil it, obviously, if you don't. Do you know the core of the storyline for series two, part two? No, man. Honestly, I'm like totally. It's not that I, I didn't it, like the games. It's just that it's quite another thing. Yeah. I was bowled over with it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. The fucking just watch the media watch the in general. There's so much shape to watch, not shape, but so much stuff to watch and consume. Eh? It's kind of hard to stop. Eh? Well, that was the difference back in the day when it when you had just the four channels. It's basically everyone was watching these standards. Yep, you could all charge out it next day. Yep, a few and shows like... like Red Dwarf, mm. both fools and horses, with us Empire. No, I'm like, oh, have you watched this? No, I've watched that. Oh, have you seen this? No, no, I've not yet, but it's on the list. Yeah, no more. I've got a little bit of a, a feeling that that's why... You know how you don't really feel like classics are made anymore? Well, I think it's kind of the abundance of everything we've got as well, you know, like, and... And there was always firsts. If... If there was never a gangster film... And there was no Godfather, no Scarface, no Goodfellas, no Casino. And then the Gentleman came out. That would be the fucking Scarface, wouldn't it? That'd yeah. be the all-time great. It'd be the one that's on like teenagers' <clears throat> walls and stuff, posters and all. I mean, there's a lot. There's something a little bit more epic about Scarface because he was like a fucking international drug lord. It was all about him, wasn't it? Whereas great movie, Guy Ritchie yeah. films, uh, yeah. Guy Ritchie films are <laughs> trademarked to be a bit more intricate, aren't they? And not really so much about one person. It's more about how the stories cross over and it all folds back to a, a conclusion, a finale. Like the lock stock bit, where he, you know, just does it. <laughs> when you work out what he's done at the end, where, whereby the two gangs have that shootout in the different apartment, these geezers, t a Turkish and all that, get not Turkish, but, you know, whatever, bacon and that, that get to all keep the fucking... Mm. Get away scot free because they technically didn't do anything wrong because someone else stole the gander that they stole off them. 
and then they all killed each other. So they were just like, oh, fuck. See, like, like Pulp Fiction, I suppose, as well, isn't it? It's like how they're all linking together. Yeah. Guy Ritchie's clearly a Tarantino fan. But who right. is? But who isn't, really? Apparently, he's a right weird fella, which doesn't surprise anyone. But Sunday, because she, she went to drama school in Los Angeles. Mm. Uh, she grew up till she was like 11 in Alaska. And then went to 11 till like 18 or 16 in Cyprus. And then went back to Alaska for a couple of years. Then went to drama school in Los Angeles and then came up to England to do London drama school. She, she was in the same way that in there's certain universities in London where a guy Richie will go in and have a chat with them. And that's pretty mad. But where mm. she was, they were like, right, today's guest speaker is Quentin Tarantino. Because <laughs> yeah. he lives in Hollywood. So it's just like... She was like one of her friends was seeing him and, and, and he's a proper fuck, he's into some weird shit. But what he's, a, feet, like? he's a big cokehead, isn't he? You can, you can tell that, like. Yeah. You can see, like. Apparently, oh, he's a bit of an arse in the way because he made Uma Thurman drive the car and kill Will. She, 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 she did not do it and then the car crashed. Yeah, you tell me about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, get get just, I get her point, mate. I, yeah. I kind of get his point of, he wanted to see this, but I totally wanted to side the hunt, man, like. Ultimately, yeah, it's not She's right. not a fucking, uh, driver, isn't she? Nah. Stunt women, if you like to. Yeah, yeah, totally. It's a big ass to, to do all the stuff she has to do anyway, but, uh, she, she had to do loads of wire work fucking stuff and like, like, it's a whole uh, there's actually courses you probably seen but, like, mm. but this is courses specifically for uh, fight scenes like mm. you put it on your, as an actor you put it on your CV I'm in a fight train mm. cool yeah it makes sense but you just don't really think of it as a separate like box ticking exercise like, mm. Because um, when I was reading about you know getting into acting, it's it was highly recommended just to do it, just for the sake of almost just like your your manoeuvrability. Like it just it helps play into the other sort of physical sides of, of, of drama we've got acting as well. But just yeah, specifically doing fight training, sort of like quite a lot more. Than those, because... But I could see myself, for example, get it with with the right connections, perfectly happy being like henchman number four. You know, do you know what I mean? Who just gets punched by Vinnie Jones or something? Like, because it's not necessarily about the fighting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But, you know, it's not really about the fighting necessarily. You might, you might just get punched. That might be the, the training. Like, I imagine that's the start of the training. But first of all, we're going to show you how to look like you've been convincingly punched in the face. You know, and that's what you got to sell. Sort of back character, just like kind of background. Yeah, you would. Big bald head and beard, just like totally. Yeah. Angry face. You got the size for it and the goatee and, and the hair. Henry Jones is like. I can't remember his accent. How's it go again? Where is it from? I can't do any Henry. accents. Uh. Oh, wait, reach! <laughs> Come and show him who's fucking boss, eh? And I'm going up and totally hook a guy. <laughs> that, that got a bit Welsh then. Oh, I can't remember his voice. I just remember he's got a funny square haircut. In what? Just in general. Oh, Vinnie Jones? Yeah, Vinnie Jones, yeah. Oh, but he said Henry. He, he is well, he's not. His name is Jones. Yeah, but he hasn't got an accent. He hasn't got a worse accent at all. He's got a Cockney accent. Yeah, he's, uh, uh, I could be up here. He's, uh... I'll be able to do it, yeah. No problem, that sort of... Because I've got the voice as well. Mm. What is going on with this fucking game? I do want to do a few courses like that, just to, you know, I'm trying to get hold of my, my brother's a twat, of, uh, my dad would actually be pissed off of him if he knew that he was not helping his little brother with a little bit of advice to get into the insane, you know what I mean? That's all of, a couple of years ago I called him a few times, I didn't fucking do it for months, but like over this course of like a week I called him about seven or eight times, you know, just in case I want to get hold of my brother. I got hold of his wife in the end and she was like, oh, just, you know, I, mean, I talked to Kate a bit, she's lovely, she was really supportive when my dad died. My dad fucking loved Kate. 
I love his wife. Just loved her. She's a she's a great woman. And yeah, so I, I messaged her when her, her mum her dad died, and I messaged her, her the other day. She was like, "Oh, just yeah, give Martin a call, just because he he likes to hear from me." And he messaged me at Christmas, day, but I called him again the other day. I messaged him, just saying, "Oh, I just didn't get a chance." So yeah, uh, he still hasn't fucking. Oh, and I, I, it's, I am I am calling to see how my brother is, but I also want to ask Martin. I'm writing stuff. I've got a pilot on the go. Mm. Got any uh, got any tips? And he might go, oh well, yeah, just just you know, for this reason, go and do some elocution lessons. Gonna give you a bit more range. Yeah. You know. just, I mean, he's just a bit of a like sort yourself out kind of guy. Like he doesn't believe in. He, 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 but maybe it's kind of. Family's a fool. Maybe it's kind of best doing it yourself. You can like sussing out yourself, going the hard way, like. Right? Well, I mean, I think that's definitely the way in life in general. But part of that journey is picking up tidbits where you can. That 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 is literally part of the journey. Like with with Flair bartending, I had to come out the hard way, but that involved putting myself in working working hard to put myself in a position where I could ask someone a little bit, and they would give me a bit of. He's my brother. You know, I'm not just, I'm not fucking messaging people on Twitter down oh, like, even though I will do that when I've got a party made, but <laughs> that is, that is part of the hustle, I think, you know, and, uh, if I tell Kate that I'm making a pilot, she'll be like, oh, brilliant, All right, yeah, when, you, when you've got it ready, send it to us and we'll have a look, and, hmm. um, maybe I'm just reading too much, but my brother's just a bit like that in general, so I'm sort of putting two and two together, I'm putting, the fact that he's like that in general and he hasn't got back to me, I'm just assuming it, but he might be helpful in the end. Yeah. But he's just a bit of a. How did he get his brick? Was a... Well, this is the thing. He's he grafted. He yeah. he he was. He's the oldest as well out of all six of us. He, he's about 52, 52 now. Mm. He's um. He's the one who you know, eighteen wanted to what sixteen. To be an actor, and he was told it was a good idea by my mum and dad. Secure enough, and it's like, you can't do it, Rocky. Right, yeah, yeah, that kind of thing, but not in a way that my dad was a bit, you know, if I'm honest, he was, that was one of his, he, he wasn't a super for the stars kind of dad, he was a, you know, just try and aim for this salary and you'll be alright, son, sort of thing. You know, at least he was more of a, this is the lowest, it's, it's, yeah, anyway. Um, he was just trying to be set. He was practical, sensible dad. He was, you know, he was born in the war. He didn't, he, didn't, I mean, he didn't have those stories growing up. And no one from his school was, you know, fucking Ryan Giggs or Alan Shearer or Ryan Gould. You know, it wasn't, uh, wasn't it was in his eyes. Up anyway. Well, mine was very defiant and and went off to he learned his acting lessons, his elocution lessons, he was on stage loads when he was. You know, he performed at the theatres in the big theatres in town, and then he went on to his big his big money deal was he was the the host of Price Drop TV, which I was that. surprised as well. But apparently, within the industry, it's highly respected and highly paid because it's really hard to do live shopping. Is it not so, long stints as well? You'll be yeah, happy. and if no cunts ringing in about this product, you've got to keep jabbering about it. And, yeah, and he yeah. is a very, like, he hasn't even got his real well. accent anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's totally like that. You're, he's pitching constantly. But he does yeah. that in real life. He's just a bit of a... But he's always been... I remember when we were, you know, clearing out some of my, my old stuff from my dad's house, and I, I had a PlayStation 2 case, like a PS2 game. It was like a demo. You know, them demos you used to get with the magazines. Oh, man. I this is when I was... Yeah, yeah. The, class, the one with the little memory card holder and that. And he was... So I was 25 at the time, so he'd have still been in his, like, you know, mid 40s, whatever. Mm. And I went to throw it in a bin, and he was like, oh, do you not want that? I went, no, he's like, oh, he was like, oh, I'll take it. And he took the sleeve out, and put it in, put the empty, you know, the blank DVD yes. case in this box. And then Kate started laughing, he was like, he always, and he was like that as a kid, but I just didn't realise he never grew out of it, so I didn't really grow out of it. He's 14 years older than me. Is that for like CD different just for, like, so he sends out demos all the time, or did oh, right, back in them yeah. days, he did. So he would rather put it in a nice, he would rather than buy in a new case. Hmm. Yeah, but it was a case of, he was just sort of a bit like, oh wait, I'll find a use for it. But that's, that's just how penny pinch he was. I remember when I was, when I was little, he was telling me about a, uh, yeah. Like I say, when I was five, he was 19 leaving home to do this as well, so... But he used to, he used to always take me to Panto and that, and because Panto is, I was born on the 2nd of January. 
I was always getting called up for like special treatment because you know obviously he was backstage going, oh, my little brother's doing this, it's his birthday. Mm. Um, but yeah, he was always, I remember him telling me about, he used to, like for, for a good few months, he lived on cornflakes and water. Like, he didn't Ooh, have yeah. milk money. Yeah, yeah, so that's his, that's his, that's his own self-madeness. Which, yeah. uh, he doesn't know how much I respect that. I've never really, you know, we're, we're not close. We just, he was my, uh... Acquaintances. Well, he was one of the nicer brothers, but, um... Just like I say, 14 years older than me. He was a different generation. Um, but yeah, he, I don't really know. I wouldn't even call it a big break as such, because he's not like he's broken into being famous, but he's... He just makes a good living out of it, and... He gets. He has about fucking five, or six hundred days a year, and um, he is a bit of a selfish cunt. Though. That's, this is the, again. This is why I think he's just not going to help me. Because he's a bit known for it. He's. He did. He was a bit naughty in everyone's eyes. I mean, I stood. I stood by him because he was my brother. But so he got Louise knocked up. Had one kid. Left her to carry on his career. So she got a council house. Got back with her for a few months, got her knocked up again, did the same thing, left her and went on, did his follicle around and his... She sort of spent... It was one of those scenarios where even my mum was a bit upset with him because he was like... He would... Rather than... He got out of paying child support because he wasn't on a regular wage. Like, he got out on a technicality and he was happy to do that. But instead of just giving her 100 quid every now and again, he'd swoop in, buy them really extravagant presents whenever he did show up three or four times a year. Take him to Disneyland, Florida, and you know, from a, from a, if kids not educated properly, mum's struggling to pay for their fucking trainers, and she's the one that's always giving them a bollock. Dad mm. shows up, it's all fucking show business. We're going to Florida, so fortunately they were educated well by. She's got a really nice family, but you can see how that could have played out, and rightly so. They've always they're not, they're not the closest to they're older, they're adults now, but they they spent quite a bit of time. Really. Like mum's a hero in their eyes, and they're right. Mm. I never got on his back, but everyone else did. <laughs> I was like, he's my brother, living there. Uh, yeah, he's just always been a bit like that. He mm. actually, honestly, this is true of themselves. <laughs> so when I was really little, I was like three. Uh, obviously, they start a bank account for you when you were a kid, and they? Someone in the family. And mm. Martin was the one to do it for me when I was. I might have even been like one. You know, when I was born, somebody opened a bank account for me and put the first ten pounds in there. And I shit you not, when I was eighteen, he asked for it back. <laughs> I shit you not. <laughs> That's like a total rimmer thing to do. Yeah, yeah, no, he's very not rimmer. Come to think of it, he um. Can't that back. <laughs> I remember one year because they were well into my my brother, my Gareth. He's the next one like, up from me. So there's Martin, his eldest, and there's two more, and there's Gareth. And Gareth just seems to take look up to Martin a lot. He's about mm. seven years older than me, but they're both really into Doctor Who. They used to take all these things off the, you know. Doctor very nerdy about trying to like trying to get every every Doctor Who episode, you know, off the telly whenever it was on, they'd fucking set the recorder and that's it. so there was a currency in my household that was blank VHS tapes. You know, it was a thing that everyone kind of wanted at various points in their life. Yeah, would have seen that. I remember one year for Christmas, Gareth's got Martin a blank VHS because he's not right, he's not got much money, but that's what his brother will make use of. He'll like it. And yeah, it's mm, bad to see why that would be good though. <laughs> the next year, might give it back to him. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh shit, you know. He raised, he raised. He just didn't open it. <laughs> oh, yeah. He just kept it in the plastic seal and just gave it back. <laughs> Isn't. I'm not even joking. I've forgotten about those two stories. Yeah, actually, I forgot that he asked me for... Honestly, he asked me for a tenner back. <laughs> I was just like, fuck off. And he was deadly serious. He was getting a bit annoyed about it. I'm like, mine, fuck you. There's no way I'm giving you money. And he's like, well, that's a bit out of order, isn't <laughs> He's just making it funnier. <clears throat> yeah, he didn't see the funny side. <laughs> He was just like that, honestly, just one of them guys. Chancellor. He's just a fucking Jew. <laughs> <laughs> that's the best way to describe him. He is like Rimmer, that's probably the best way to describe him. Mm. 
Rumours a bit Jewish. Borrowing money off of Lister to get him his own birthday present. Where he's got like 14 grand sitting there. I'm going to quickly eat, man. Be back in a look. Oh, come on, I. A few minutes. Yeah. Corn mints, uh, taco beans, um, vegetables. Would you be in favour of a TV show where 10 dogs, all with spiky armour plates, get to chase after a toff? Like, what? On his, on his person, like... Rever reverse mad. fox hunting, basically. <laughs> what do you mean by spikes? I don't know what you mean by the spikes. I don't know, just some sort of Legion of Doom style, like, attire that's got spikes out, sticking out of them, you know, like... Just trying to for good measure, to be honest. It could just be angry dogs. Like mad Max, so... Yeah. Yeah, I would... Wouldn't be a favour of it, but I would definitely watch it. <laughs> I want, um... What I would like to see is a series about eccentric uh, people in history, like uh, Howard Hughes, all the way up to Christopher Eubank. Yes, sir, Chris Eubank. Have you seen Louis Theroux meets Chris Eubank? Yeah, I've seen that. He's trying to drive his big giant oh, truck through the wee village. He does just, yeah, he just drives it through the, the city something. I haven't seen it in years, to be honest, but... Um, I, I actually don't want to really laugh at him because I, I know he's going to be a bad time in there, right? Chris Eubank. Yeah, like. sure. He's a, he, we like him down here. He's just he's a, easily to assume he's a twat because of the way he talks. But he's a nice bloke and he's no. he's a man of. The, he, he's he's very self important and stuff, but he's kind of like he was a world champ. Our boxers just have that. You always call them champ if they've won it once, don't they? Didn't you? Um, I like how he was on that celebrity show that he made up. Um, Monaco from like Twigs. So, like, I'm a celebrity, get me the fuck yeah. out of here program. Yeah, he's just, he's just eccentric. He, he does the Queen's way, you know, like that sort of hand rolls he does. Yeah. He, honestly, he, he'll he walk down the street or cycle or in his monster truck and he waves like that out the window. Royalty. Yeah, yeah, like he's royalty. <laughs> it's seen, really uh, funny. You seen the video? Uh, Chris Eubank goes to PSC. I think I do it, but... He could do anything and be funny, that's the thing he's... I think it's, he uh, uh, I don't think it's that guy who, like, that test guy, but it's like a young black comedian who takes him to KFC. And he's like... He tries, like, what is this? Fanta? He totally takes, takes, takes a step of a sip of the Fanta. He does a wee dad, he's like, mmm, very nice. It? Yeah, yeah, he's really, he's like that in real life, but he's not, he's not yeah. fucking about. He's, he's, ne there's not a single story of Chris Eubank being rude. Mm. Like, his sons, a bit different. I know he's obviously lost one son, and I've got nothing about him. Chris Eubank Jr., I think he was just, uh, a bit of a roughie, because there was actually an interview with him saying that there was, and I, I actually remember this, because he's, he's, he's only a little bit younger than me, but I vaguely remember this, because it was, it was a, I just left his college and he did it to the school behind. Um, there was a point where some people were after him apparently, so what he's done is he's, he's got like a fucking metal bar or something like that and he's, uh, he's gone into all the schools, just opened the door looking for, looking for a certain couple of people. And uh, he says, like, thank God he didn't find it, it was after that, like a police camp. And uh, obviously he didn't get charged with assault, he didn't have to get anyone, but you know, he was, it was basically them when he was having some work. He's uh, 18 years old, like, like he's down in America. So, uh, but, uh, he's a good way from his friends. And stuff, but, uh, he attributes that to being a success now. But uh, his other son, he's a proper little punk. Freedom. He's renamed himself Freedom. Freedom Eubank. And he just rebelled. And obviously, they're all pretty hard. Like, even the ones that didn't become pro boxers, they're all boxers. And he's just a right terror. He, he, even I think he's recently gone to jail for like six or seven years or something. Like, blah, 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 blah. He's only got 31. He's a swat. I've never had a run with myself, but, but no, there's not a single story. Chris Eubank's known for being extremely because of the way he carries himself, how dignified he's, he thinks of himself. He's got to be extremely polite and well respectable to everyone, doesn't he? Well, that doesn't fit into his character, and he is. Mm. 
you know, you, you hear about him going into certain restaurants and that. He's just uber polite and he'll get up and thank the owner and thank the managers and just, you know. So he needs a bit more pandering to. Like Michael, when he used to work down the car wash, um, that's where he used to get his car washed. Mm. And apparently he just he just sort of walk around the car looking at stuff and then just point at nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and they've just got to go there and fucking give it a little brush down and, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's so long with it. Yeah, yeah, it was just like that was it was the the bosses were just like just fucking just 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 let him have his you know, just let him be like this, it's fine. He's not an arse. And he always tipped, you know. He sort of he'd pay fifty quid for the watch and fifty pound tip, that's why it was uh, you know, you get the proper five star fellow whenever he went down there, but yeah. I remember driving through town and Jim who was who was driving was well into boxing at the time, and this is when I was probably about seventeen, so he's only just he's not long retired. And he's driving his monster truck, and Jim was going mad. He's like, it's champ, it's you, Bank. And he just pulled up next to him with the lights, and he's just like, oh, champ. Beep, beep, beep. You know, and he loved it. He was just waving, doing the Queen's wave out the window. And he's like, oh, that Chris, how you doing, mate? <laughs> but he's loving every second of it. I saw him a couple of years ago, just cycling on the seafront. Did you can Arnold Schwarzenegger cycles about uh, Venice Beach quite often? It's quite a yeah. very uh, pro cycling. Can Obviously, yeah. health in general. Like, he loves uh, cycling. A lot of videos I'm cycling about just on his own. Same way. Yeah, that's nice. Here we go. Run down. Run James. Is it? Mm. Yeah, just after the wildfire, I think there's uh, several pictures of him running the whole trip to Grand Beach. There's this funny video. Obviously, you'll know who Le LeBron James is. Do you know Car Car Carmelo Ant Ante? He's like LeBron James's second in command sort of thing. Well, there's this video of these like black guys in the car, and they pull up next to these two guys on the bikes, uh, wearing like stupid gear, stupid helmets, and they turn their heads, and it's LeBron and Anthony. What oh, the fuck are you doing, cycling about? That's what they do. Eh? Yeah, Fucking Rio Ferdinand was is about. It was last summer. Literally where I grew up, well, when, when I moved in with my dad at 15, 16, that part of Shoreham, you walk across the bridge, footbridge, over the river, it's yeah. the town, and the first cafe is just like a little massive, well, not massive, but like a, a little plaza where they got all their chairs out, and yeah, like he was just sitting there, because I think he, I don't know why he was down, I think it's for the Women's Euros, because they play a lot of the games in Bright, at Brighton Zamek Stadium, and he's just obviously, Shoreham's actually, a really, he's known for being a really nice place. And um, it's expensive, like, well, expensive as it is down there, but also quite central, but anyway. Um, central is the county, not the city, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's just Rio Ferdinand, apparently someone's gone, you know, you look like Rio Ferdinand, so I'm Rio Ferdinand. <laughs> I would not have been able to not, you'd want to sit, like, for me, I'd want to sit down, but equally you have to remind yourself, like, you know, even though he's one of the more approachable sorts of, it, it looked like a scenario oh, where, um, yeah, annoying. yeah, but but I think you know, but I, I I sort of I try to go by what Roy Keane's like the ultimate leave me alone kind of guy, so I he take it from him. All. But it, it, even he he acknowledges like if he's in a moment with the fans in general, and that's oh, part of his job that he's there and for, at the time he'll have a chat oh, with him after like in, and that like um, like when he does the overlap. Which is mm -hmm. that Gary Neville podcast type style thing? We got all the fuck if you see it, it's just pretty good. They just get low. There's, a, there's one fan from each Premier League club, and they just sit there with Neville and Carragher, and then someone else and have a chat about all their woes. Um, just like this is just called the overlap debate, but yeah, anyway, it's really open and good. And yeah, keen on that. He, if that's a sort of, sort of scenario where he's been known to like hang around for quite a bit after the chat to people in that is. But like when he's on his own, it's obvious he's going to be left alone. Like he makes a thing of it. He's just, he's, he tells people to, good to do one. <laughs> like people have had, people just come up to him and try to get a picture with him, and he's just like, "No, I'm watching the game." But Ferdinand, in that moment, I think it would have been one of them where he's, he's almost inviting it. He's sitting there, fucking looking like real Ferdinand, <laughs> like, right out in the open on his own. He's not like he's with his family or anything. He's just like, I'm real Ferdinand. See, when I see celebrities in real life, I kind of take part to the looks of you. Uh, not like, not like you, obviously, you, you, you see celebrities in photos and movies and films, but I kind of resist. 
especially with Simon Pegg and I was like, you see you fucking that smoke? And things like that, it's like, you just thought it was here. Yeah. And I seen Eddie Izzard, I was like, why is he fucking sweating like that? It's just, you yeah, didn't think about the things, you like, obviously if you were to get a photo of you, if you were a celebrity, they take photos of you facing forward, you can only see them. They're ready for it, aren't they? Right? Yeah, it's so it's light in the stuff as well. Yeah. I've seen James McAvoy, he was making a movie for Phil. He looked kind of like uh, older than I thought. I thought he was in the fucking 20s. Well, that's older, it. Um, yeah. I realise uh, Jim Jeffries, I, was, I watch his, or well, lately I've been watching his. Uh, He's just got a podcast called I Don't Know About That, and it's the topic every week. He just sits there, because he's a really naturally funny dude, but he looks quite old on that, he's only 45. So. Yeah, he's had a hard party life for him. But when you see him at 44 on Netflix special, it's just makeup. He's so, you know, only yeah, a little bit, but he's got makeup. Well. Yeah, yeah. But my brother wears makeup every time he performs. It's not a, it's not a funny thing to nah. do, right? Everything, if you're on in TV for an interview, you're going to make that fight. Did you know that Sam Jackson was a hero, Daddy? Samuel L. Jackson? Yeah, at 43. I didn't know that. I, yeah. I, I think he was an actor until he was late 30s. So I don't think he was, uh... It was heroin or crack, but he was an unknown actor. And, like, yeah, because he said the turning point was, um... It's like the caption said heroin, but he was saying crack, like some sort of rock, but I don't know if they both thought it was, or whatever. Yeah. So, but it was one of the big, you know, it was that, they said heroin, but yeah, he said that. Like, so. And it was like his daughter who found him passed out one time, and that was when he switched his life around. And then, uh, yeah. and the rest of his life. I think he'd, he'd perhaps been in something like Juice, because you look at him in Juice and he doesn't look old. No one you could like. Yeah. I would have thought he would be about sort of early 30s then, but I suppose as a kid you find it hard to gauge things, didn't you? Like, I don't think we look old now, but as a kid I definitely thought 38 year olds looked old. Alright. Oh, uh, the US Spike Lee movies at the early Spike Lee movies, they were good though. Not massive, yeah. I can't really put my finger on Spike Lee. She's all that and uh, do the right thing. Film. Oh, some of the Jackson. Ah, they're great. They're quite date reading them almost, but they're really good. Yeah, right. I, I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 relations, mate. I did a lot of, for my film studies, I did a lot of, uh, David Fisher, Guy Ritchie, and Tarantino. Plus we got tasked with all these uh, foreign films, it was part of the exercise, it was like, uh, deliberately doing all these foreign stuff out of films for the films and uh, stuff in cinema. But a war film. Mm -hmm. One of them is that one I've bought, I've definitely bought it up. How I've, yeah, it's called Funny Games. Yeah, the Spanish one where you talk to the camera. Danish. Danish. It's very intense, sir. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a Danish film, but yeah, it's, I've seen the original. Yeah, and they do the, yeah, they, they do the false endings and stuff. Yeah, where you get to choose whether or not the story ends. Um, and it's more gritty in the first one, but they did an amazing job. I've got a book, a uh, massive book. I've, I've actually got a few of them. Uh, a thousand movies to see before you die. There's a big section on that again, in that movie. Yeah, but Lahaine, that was another one we made to watch, and that was that was obviously in French. And it was about the... Do you know how bad the slums of Paris are meant to be? Uh, I've not read up on it. I can I I uh, picture it. Yeah, it's, it's, it's somewhere you don't really think of being... But yeah, the slums of Paris are fucking... Take care of Trish for me. I mean, it's, it's a capital Don't city, you're going to have poverty, and that poverty is going to be rife and extreme. That's just what cities seem to do, mm. unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that, that was a fucked up. I can't remember, it was just about three black kids, obviously race race wars and stuff as well. Yeah. Um, can't remember the life of me how I ended up, but a very fucking gritty, black and white is what I think, but made in the, the mid-90s, but black and white. Mm. 
I mean, it might, it might be one of them clever, where they only had one item that was red in the whole film, and that was part of the things that we had to talk about, you know. Like, uh, Shudnor's first. Dante's left. Yeah, something like that, perhaps. And I don't think he can win. Watch all those. What was that? Like some good film studies teachers and some shit ones. Like where did it come from? Urizen is not a demon. I know that for a fact because I'm from the underworld. Yeah, but it shouldn't have even been teachers, basically. Mm. Oh my god. One woman there, right? I used to have a teacher for films. Like she was, she just very obviously hated men. She was a thing. dyke. Mm. And I use the term dyke deliberately. Because when I think of dyke, I think of bitter, miserable lesbian. And she was a yeah. dyke. <laughs> and she's got that reputation. She, to be fair, she did also bully the women, the girls. <laughs> so actually, she wasn't, she was just a, a fucking bitch. An arse piece. Just an arse, but quite young. And like, she te she, you know, she thought she was a bit special, I think, because she was one of the few college teachers that went and did lectures at the university as well. But, um, I, re I remember just, I, I put in a formal complaint about her in the end, and got mm. her investigated. And obviously she came correct. When there's someone sitting